Hey, welcome back. My name is Al, and this is part two of the Venus Flytrap, and today we'll be making the body. Before we get there, if you love all things 3D, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so to start with, with a large brush size, I'm going to rotate around to the back of the head and use that snake hook brush. Now the goal here is to get a large enough brush size, but too large, and it's gonna screw up the details on the top and the bottom of the head. So I can start with a smaller brush, pull that out, and then use a larger brush. Now don't be afraid of things like looking really bad at this stage, especially in Core Mini, when you're using that snake hook brush, because currently it's way too thin, it's really stretched. But as you saw, I can use Inflate to beef that up. And then just with snake hook, I really wanted these super sharp, dramatic angles. So not like super realistic, you know, a snake would never have like a bend in its neck like that. It'd probably be more curved, but this is not a snake and I really wanted to have some style with it. So just pushing, pulling, I'm checking all the angles. So I'm just finessing that curve to see what it'll look like from every single angle. And the process is the same for the legs. I use snake hook, pull out those legs. The legs are kind of difficult because they're so little. So really quickly I went in with the inflate brush, beefed up those legs just so they have more geometry there. And I can come in here, I lowered my polygon count by pressing that low button. And then I need to be careful on the thinner part of the legs with clay buildup. But once again, I'm doing that texturing with the clay buildup back and forth. I wanted this neck to feel like a vine. So with the slash, I can come in here and start those, um, those cuts all the way down and just make sure it kind of feels like it's flowing from the top to the bottom. And remember, when I'm doing these slashes, the first run, that's just the rough draft. Right? These are my little guidelines to help me. That way I can go through and finesse a little bit more. So holding Alt on my keyboard, we know we'll do the opposite. So instead of slashing in, cutting in, it's going to pull out. So I'm able to pull out this nice, fine, very sharp edge and then hit the valleys again with that slash just to get this sharper look to it. One thing that I would change about this is the legs. They honestly don't look like they're supporting the weight of this plant. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I say that all the time, but this was a, a quick project. I probably should have made the, the feet thicker and then actually maybe like flat on the bottom. So it just looks like it's holding that weight a little bit more. With clay buildup, I can very carefully go in between the lips and just start going back and forth to basically extrude a chunk of that tongue. And then with snake hook, remember a smaller brush size here because I don't want to mess up the lips. I can stretch that tongue out. And I just have it kind of dangling out, but I didn't love it. So I end up using snake hook again and just altering the shape, giving it a better silhouette. After I pull out, just like the legs and the neck, I used Inflate to beef that up. I also used that Core Mini Pro tip linked above to help me with the topology, get me denser polygons. And with the Move Brush and Snake Hook, just kind of playing around with that tongue. Honestly, it doesn't read super well. Looking back at this, I would make the tongue probably twice as large uh, and sticking out a little further just so you can see what's going on a little bit better. So one thing to note is if you have detail and you need to move something, I wouldn't use snake hook. The reason for that is snake hook has the purple cursor. Any brush in Core Mini with a purple cursor means that it's using Sculptures Pro mode. So a larger brush with a purple cursor means it's gonna add large polygons and a smaller brush is smaller polygons. So if you wanted to change the curvature of a detailed neck, I would use the move brush instead. The move has a red cursor, which means it's not going to alter the polygons and you can retain that detail. So with clay buildup, I'm now going like horizontally along the ridges of this vine, just building up that form back and forth, back and forth. Also gives it that nice texture that we're going for. And I'm very careful along the very thin spots of this mesh 
And if things are screwing up, like if I'm sculpting on one side and it's too thin, it's messing up the other, I can just inflate and then go back to clay buildup. So rotating around my mesh, checking to see how everything is looking from all sides. One thing that I just kind of did, it's not perfect, but uh, with something this dramatic, I really needed to pay attention to uh, the center of gravity. The most of the mass is in the head, but also in like his torso area where his legs meet. So I have those roughly centered. So from the side view, you can really tell that this character, although like I said, the feet, they don't look like those are weight bearing feet. But anyways, center of gravity is pretty solid. Uh, it does look like he's striking, so that's okay if he's a little bit further back. But most of the weight is over the center of those legs. That's important. Otherwise, this looks off balance and wrong. I used inflate to give these knobby knees. And I was inspired by, you know, some creatures from the thing a little bit on the bottom half of this guy. It's really amorphous kind of creatures that are super cool. Clay build up slowly working on some of that muscle structure, or at least the idea of the muscle structure. You can hold alt using clay build up. So instead of smoothing, typically I will do that. Just hold alt to carve away and then build back up with clay build up. I decided to add some sort of anus to this creature. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. Using clay build up to pull that out and then clay build up along the sides, as well as that slash brush. Give the idea of maybe just folds of skin rotating around checking everything see those feet aren't great i'm just trying to line them up as if they kind of touch the ground but for this i really enjoyed the curvature of this body just how dramatic that is well thank you for sticking around for the video you are awesome i really appreciate it if you loved what you saw please subscribe i will see you next time